This week on the Internet Cafe, Sex on the Web. We'll meet the author of this Salon article, which says that the Internet's porn sites are leading the way in web technology. This is Danny Ash. She used to be an exotic dancer. Now she's an Internet entrepreneur. NerveLink is a literate erotica website that takes a highbrow view of cyber sex. You may have read the Ask Isadora column in the newspaper. Now Isadora's advice on sexual problems is on the web. And meet Eva Bunker. She manages oneandonly.com, a website that puts the emphasis on love, not sex. Sex on the web this week at the Internet Cafe. The Internet Cafe is brought to you by Z Auction, the live online shopping experience. Additional funding from PC Connection and Mac Connection, the catalog and online superstore with PC and Mac products, toll-free technical support, and overnight delivery. And by Windows Magazine, delivering desktop, enterprise, and internet computing news, reviews, features, and how-tos for a Windows world, because the world runs on Windows. Additional funding from SoftSource Incorporated publishers of Pro One's Mathematics Tutor in a Box for school year 98-99, including six CDs and workbooks. So we're going to tread a little bit lightly here uh, with sex on the web. Uh, does this make you feel uncomfortable at all doing this? Well, I get the easy part. I get to do the uh, poor play, as it were. <laughs> Dating. <laughs> Dating. Dating, okay. You're chickening out of this. <laughs> Andrew, it's you and me again. <laughs> I, I think it's very interesting the fact that I think sex online is probably the biggest industry on the web right now. That's for sure. And I think that, you know, sex chat and fantasy role playing is some of the most popular things that people do on the internet. So I think it'll be yeah. interesting to explore it a little. Well, I guess there's sex and then there's sex on the web. I mean, there's sort of the soft porn, sort of mild stuff, and then there's a lot of that, you know, hardcore live cameras from Amsterdam kind of mm -hmm. stuff, which we're not going to get into. Right. Uh, but you're right, it's a big business people are doing. There's a lot to learn, really, from the business models, from the technology that these people are doing. So it's not just a sort of uh, lascivious kind of thing we're talking about. Bryna, you're from Nerve.com, which I think is kind of a highbrow uh, literary magazine for sexuality and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. You guys have created NerveLink, which uh, is a, a bit of a search engine for for that kind of uh, material, and really not porn, but, but really sort of the, the uh, more tasteful erotica, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit about how, how the idea of, of a, a site like this came about and, and what's on there. Well, uh, sex on the internet is a very popular topic. You see it Probably all the, the time. the most popular yeah. topic, I think. Um, if you look at any search engine, actually, you'll see that people search on dirty words more than anything. Right. But, um, what there really was lacking on the, on the internet was an organized search engine that mm -hmm. had the scope of sexuality that was out there that really wasn't represented any place that I could find. So um, we created Nerve Link to be a comprehensive index of all kinds of sexuality on the mm -hmm. web, whether it is pictures, whether it's literature, whether it's chat, whether right. it's a dating service, whether it's poetry. Um, just anything that has to do with sex, it seemed appropriate to put together and to organize and to make it fun to learn more about sex. And I, and I think it's clear, to, important sort of to make the distinction between really people exploring their sexuality in sex and pornography. And it sounds like this is really mm -hmm. for, for that first group, uh, you know, who want to... Yeah, you know. no, it, it, it does ostensibly, well, no, I guess it doesn't. <laughs> It is, it is more about sexuality. Um, mm -hmm. We definitely have erotic pictures sure. that's well, part of sexuality. Always, right, yeah, it crosses I mean, over. And it is about titillation, and it's kind of giving a, a comprehensive and total look at sexuality. Mm -hmm. So you can one second be looking at an STD site, and then the next second be looking at an erotica picture. Mm -hmm. And somehow it all seems cohesive right. because it's together, and right. it's all encouraging you to learn and to find out more. I think right. it's pretty fun. Good. Well, mm -hmm. uh, speaking of cohesive, Tell mm -hmm. me about some of the different categories and you know how you decided on them. And, uh, um, well, we started out really just seeing what was out there, um, and we we did have the idea that we wanted it to be a little bit more literate, a bit more uh, engaging for the mind as well as the body, and um, so we came up with a, a grand scheme of kind of academia, like history, mm -hmm. um, health, literature, uh, pictures, art. Right. 
and um, we kind of subdivide it from there. So right now we have an intellectual section, we have an academic section, we have a literature section, we have two picture sections. We have uh, the shameless sleeves, which is for the more shameless Sounds like things. the traditional yeah. type of site. Um, yeah, which is definitely on our site because right. you can't talk about sex on the internet right. without that. And um, we also have another section called Eye Candy, which has a lot of the online photography sites. The more artistic nudes of, and, and yeah. things like that. Okay, real quickly, tell me a couple of your real popular, the sites that you thought were sort of the best ones. You've been out, you know, out there searching, obviously. Um, well, my personal favorite is a site called Cruella. It's, uh, it's based Cruella. out of England. It's Cruella.com. Scared already. And, <laughs> well, the premise behind it is so odd. I, it, it just never occurred to me. It's, these, it's about Amazon women and crushing men and like mm. stepping on them. Okay. <laughs> and uh, it has this one little section with these mini men, and it, they have these women wearing bras made out of these tiny little men ah. and like little thongs and stuff. Okay. <laughs> It's very, okay. very strange. I don't but think it's we'll fun. we won't explore why that, uh, why you were attracted to that. And I probably won't show this site to my girlfriend. But, but thank you for pointing that actually, out. Actually, it's quite tame. There's, there's not really. You have to order the videos on that site, so there's not actually that much to see. It's just very well done. For URLs of today's featured websites, check out the Internet Cafe site at cmptv.com. Well, some people think adult websites are exploitive of women, but some of these sites are actually owned and run by women, and one of the most successful ones is Danny.com, and this is Danny of Danny.com. How you doing? Good, good. Now, let me ask you, you've been in a lot of different aspects of the adult business, if we can call it that. You were an exotic dancer for a while, you were involved in videos, now you're doing the web stuff. Is the web different in any significant way? Is this a different part of the adult business than the other things you've done? I think the, because the web is such a new technology, it's a level playing field, and so many of us have been able to get in, sort of get in on a level playing Meaning field. Meaning you can be an entrepreneur, exactly. not just a performer. And we can take more control of our own images, our own careers. Um, so you see, I mean, I was the first, but now there are virtually every men's magazine model and dancer that I know uh -huh. has their own website, and they're right. all in charge. Now, you're pretty cool because, as I understand it, you actually went in there and wrote your own HTML code when you started this, right? Well, when I discovered the Internet, you know, the proverbial light bulb went off, right. and I said, i got to have one of these. And um, I hired a programmer and gave him about three weeks. He wasn't really getting my concept, so I hired another programmer, still wasn't getting right. my concept. So I was on my way on a vacation in the Bahamas. I picked up the HTML manual style <laughs> and Negroponte's being digital. Right. I read them on the beach. I'm sitting there with my, you know, my HTML manual in your the sand. Your in your manual. <laughs> exactly. Right. Everybody else is reading John Grisham novels and, you know, dime store and romances. Right. And so I taught myself HTML on this uh. vacation, went home and built Danny's hard drive in three weeks. Wow. All right, let's talk about the site a little bit. Uh, do you make money? Can I ask you that? The business is very successful. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. so adult websites do make money. Yes, they do. And I guess you have three things going. You sell some stuff on your website, you have subscriptions, mm -hmm. and you have some advertising. I don't sell advertising. You don't About sell advertising. Ninety percent of our I revenue. I thought I saw some ads on your site. Um, I have a, a. It's a complicated thing, but okay. I do have a banner. Cooperative for arrangements. <laughs> a former content provider. Okay. Okay. It, you know, now has their own website, yeah. and we send them traffic. But now, as a rule, I don't sell advertising. Now, a lot no. of your website, the basic website, the Danny's hard drive, is free stuff. There's a lot of pictures of bare-breasted women, which is, I mean, it's not a hardcore site. No. Very but soft. when you go to a lot of these type sites, uh, it reminds me sort of the Barker and the Carnival. I mean, it's you can stand there for free and look at somebody on the runway, but for just five bucks, you can go in and you'd see more. Right. Is that really the game? I mean, to get people in there and then try to sell them into your subscription service? Well, I mean, it's definitely a commercial venture. Yeah. Sure. I mean, we, we're doing everything we can money. to sell subscriptions. Right. But we're also, you know, I mean, I have other goals. I want to provide information to fans so that they get a more real picture of the women that they're seeing in magazines, uh -huh. give them a little bit more of a three-dimensional view and fantasy. And then I also want to provide for the models a chance to promote themselves the way they want to be promoted. Uh -huh. I mean, you really pay attention to that. I mean, this yeah. is, you really care about the customers and about the people who work for you. It's, it, it's taking the fans and the models and putting them together, yeah. taking out the middleman. Do you mm. think at all about, the, there are people who think what you're doing is bad? And you should not make it easy for kids to log onto the web and see naked women. Uh, do you think about that at all? I don't think we do make it easy for kids to get on. I mean, I, I'm always very conscious of, of what I'm publishing. And, you know, I try to show very positive views of the women in my mm -hmm. industry. 
And, and I'll give you credit. Yeah. You do have big warnings up there, and yeah. you send people off to Net Nanny if they want to do that kind of exactly. stuff, et cetera. I, I wholeheartedly endorse Net Nanny and Surf Watch yeah. and all the other. And I feel like if you're a parent that's concerned, go and put it on your machine. You know, be a proactive parent. Put it on your machine. But, but beyond that, I mean, as a woman in charge of this, I mean, you're an example of somebody who's not exploited, but you're a business. You're making money on it, right? And you're proud of that. I'm very proud of my site, yes. Why not? <laughs> well, well, it's a great site. Thank you, Danny. Thank you. For URLs of today's featured websites, check out the Internet Cafe site at cmptv.com. Now, Eva, you run, uh, you and your family, I guess, run oneandonly.com, is that right? It's, it, it's not entirely correct. Uh, my brother is a co-founder. Um, I work there. We have another brother that works there, but this just sort well, of happened. kind of just happened? Yeah, he, he founded it and it started taking off. He needed a little bit of help because it was just growing so much. We stepped in and it's just a wonderful site. We're here. We're, we're staying. Now, for the, for the uninitiated, explain to me what oneandonly.com is all about. It's about helping people meet other people. It's about uh, having a safe, comfortable environment for people who, for singles, who are looking for romance or friendship. So it's, it's, it's basically an online dating service, is that right? It's, uh, that would be a fair. So, so a web experience. Now, oneandonly.com is actually one of the most popular and one of the most successful sites as well. And, and kind Getting of there. leading me to, to the next question is, how do you go about doing something like that? I know if I, if I wanted to do it in the personals in a newspaper, I'd phone up, I'd have my little blurb and so on and so forth. How do I go about putting in my own personal ad on okay. One and Only? Go, you show up, One and Only, and we'll walk you through the steps of, of placing an ad. We have an ad workshop. Uh, we have tips. Um, we have classic ads that have gotten a lot of response in case you, you're not really sure about you know, what you want to put in there, how you want to say it. We have an ad of the month so you can see what's really hot. Um, but basically, you're going to go in and you're going to have a headline and that's just a short blurb that's going to it's, like, it's an eye-catching thing, so that people actually go in and look at your ad. Now, I've got a photograph up of, of myself, and, and I thought one of the other neat things about your site was that you could actually do a sound bite as well. Mm -hmm. You could actually say a few words. It's, it's uh, free to add you know, a photo. It's free, it's free to have uh, an ad or a profile up there. You can add a photo. Um, you can either upload it, or you can send it with an email, or you can, you can mail it to us, and we'll scan it for you. Um, the voice, you call in. Uh, and we have 800 numbers. Hi, I'm Michael. It's just like leaving a message on your friend's answering on. machine. So it's pretty straightforward. Now, so let me let me ask you from a business perspective: How are you making money? I mean, if, if the placing my ad is free, do, do I pay for you? Pay when it's, I it's find somebody, we, or are, how does it work? We are a subscription-based uh, website. We're a okay. premium site. Um, you pay to respond. You join the All You Can Email Club, so you get an unlimited number of email, and it's a monthly. A monthly fee, so it ranges anywhere from 6.65 to 14.95 a month, just depending on on how long you, you sign up for. Okay, so now similar to an, uh, a dating service, I mean, how do do I do I do a search? Do I say like, I want, you know, a guy who's five foot? In my case, five foot five would probably be just fine, and you know those you types of things. Search, I mean, um, if you're on the site, you know, you can do a search and tell us what you're looking for by geography, by lifestyle, um, physical characteristics, and and. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll show you the ads. The other thing you can do is sign up for our Agent of Love. Oh, no, what's that? It's our most popular feature. We basically store what you want. You tell us what you're looking for in profiles. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for somebody living in California, you know, a little bit shorter than average, um, whatever. And every day, we will go through all of the new ads that we get. We get between 1,000 and 1,500 new ads a day. Wow. And we will, we will email them to you. We'll, we'll give you the headlines, we'll give you the actual ad text, and a link so that if you're interested, you go to our site, you see the picture, that's you can great. see the voice. Now, you've also got some advice columns. You've got Dana, and I think mm -hmm. you've, a doctor on there a, a that's doctor. giving you some advice as well. So, I mean, there's more than just an online dating service. There's, there's, there's tips, there's hints, there's just anything to, to make you a little bit more comfortable. So give me an idea, how many, how many ongoing profiles of people do you have? Currently, right now, that are current profiles, we have 110,000. Wow. And they're current, we, we uh, sweep the database to make sure that our, our emails are, are all up to date. Right. So that's a lot. There's an awful lot of people out there finding love Worldwide. on the Internet. E every, everywhere. That's great, Eva. Thanks so much. We're here with Larry Maggot, syndicated columnist for the LA Times. Uh, and Larry, we're talking about... Uh, Actually, the subject of sort of adult sites on the web. But uh, I talked to a woman uh, just before who said she'd created her own website, learned, eight, learned HTML programming all on her own. And uh, it got me to thinking, how hard is it really for someone that looks at all these websites and says, hey, I want to put up a website of my own? Well, it couldn't be that hard because I've done it. And, okay. and, you know, when I first started, I learned a little bit of HTML. 
And then I got smart and I said, I don't need don't to know HTML. Anymore, They're yeah. products like Front Page and Home Page and Page Mill. Right. There's tons of these. You can get a free one uh, off of AOL's website. Uh, so, so what's the first step? You basically decide what you want to do. The, the okay. first step is always content. Have an idea, get your content in order, make sure you've got good graphics, make sure you've got compelling copy. Okay. And then you take one of these programs and they basically work like a word processing program. You type in what you want, you paste in the graphics, and you upload them to your server. You have to have a relationship with an ISP that will host your site. Um, and you so you have to design, decide what's in it, yep. design it using something like a front page or a page mill, as, as you say. Uh, have an ISP that's going to host the site for you, right. and then I guess get a URL, right? Get a URL, and, and that costs you now thirty-five dollars a year to register and and have, and then uh, you you put it up there, and then the next step is to get <laughs> people to come, and that is, is really the hardest part. It's to really attract attention. Well, another website. thing is people think about putting up a website. The next issue is to maintain it, so there's Absolutely. some reason to to go there, right? Don't advertise some event that took place six months ago. Right, right. You really want to maintain it. It can be very embarrassing if you just. Uh, let it lap. But so bottom line is a normal person can figure out how to do this, right? Kids do it, lots of people okay. do it. It's not that hard. Your son did it. My son does it. Thank you, Larry. My pleasure. For URLs of today's featured websites, check out the Internet Cafe site at cmptv.com. Andrew, you did this great article in Salon called Porn Utopia Lost, which is a great title, too. And what you talk about some of the, shall we say, sleazy practices that some of the people who run the websites use to make money. Uh, so maybe first of all, I ought to ask you, explain the sort of basic business model underneath the web, how you do make money, and then we'll understand what these guys are doing. Well, there's two main ways to make money on the web. There's getting people to cough up money with their credit card or selling advertising banner space. And when you're talking advertising banner space, you can either base it on the number of people who see that ad or get a premium for convincing people to click on that ad. Actually clicks on that banner yeah, ad. That's, that's called click through. And, that's and you get paid so many cents per click or whatever. Exactly. Yep. So you want people to click. Yep. And if you're a porn site where you can't advertise in more traditional media, you're basically the only way you have of attracting traffic is by getting click through. And you get it by advertising on other porn sites. Yeah. Now, there's a lot of stuff going on here that you talk about in your article. Let's talk about click through farming. What is this? Well, click through farm, there's so much competition for traffic on the net right now, especially in the porn industry, that advertisers will pay other porn sites for the click-through rate, for mm -hmm. the number of people who come to their site through an advertising banner. So a whole tier of sites has arisen that only their only revenue is from other sites, other porn sites. So the content is irrelevant. Yeah, it's get free people content. there and get them to click somehow yeah. and you'll make money off the clicks. Right, exactly. And so if you can think of any kind of sneaky techno trick to boost your click-through rate, whether or not it's actually happening, yeah. you'll, you'll go for it. And the industry that's totally unpoliced and has some disreputable figures yeah. running around it, you get a lot of strange things happening. All right, there's another technique called circle jerking. What is that? Well, circle jerking happens when you try to leave a site or you try to click on an advertising banner and a console, another little page pops up on your site that you can't leave or a whole sequence of pages is generated so every time out, you click. you're but instead some script sends you simply to another place. Exactly. Or it sends you around and around the right. same set so of four or five So you've got to keep on sites. clicking and somebody's getting paid every time you click and you can't do what you want. Exactly. And how do they do that? I mean, what's, what's the technique? Well, it's, it's, it, it, there's a lot of different things you can do, but mainly it's JavaScript. Uh -huh. it's, it's writing little sequences of code uh -huh. that pop up new windows on top of your old windows. Now, another sneaky technique is hot linking. What is that? Hot linking is stealing plain and simple. That's when you link directly to somebody else's images and sell advertising space on your site. So Someone you're getting paid for it, but it's some other guy's content. Right, you're ripping it off from them. You're stealing their bandwidth, is what they like to call now, it. Now, what does that mean, stealing bandwidth? Bandwidth is the main fixed cost that right. any porn site has, because that's what the internet service provider will charge them for. So if you're sending traffic through a back door to their site without them getting any revenue at all, they are fixed sure. costs. So I'm using your traffic, but I'm making the money, and the guy who's right. paying for the traffic isn't making right. the money. He's getting burned. So a site yeah. can go down in a matter of hours if somebody else starts blind linking or hot linking to it. Now, as you point out in your article, this is a pretty scary trend. And, you know, porno tends to lead the way in any technology, right. as we know. And the, since there's a lot of money to be made there, these guys are using these techniques in the adult sites. Is there some concern that these sem same techniques will filter down to the mainstream sites and the web simply becomes this machine for clicks and there is no content? It's a big worry for anybody who's trying to figure out a way to make money off the web, whether it be porn sites or, you know, sports sites or finance sites. If people are using these tricks and it gets out of hand, then the whole business model is shot for everyone. And you can already see it happening in some places. Consoles are popping up everywhere. 
GeoCities. This is the circle jerking yeah. thing. Yeah, well, it's, it's a variation of okay. circle jerking. I mean, a site like GeoCities or Tripod won't circle jerk you around, but they will pop up an ad so for you when you try to leave. Yeah. So that's one problem. And some other advertisers that aren't in the porn industry at all are really going to the click-through farming model. Oh. They don't care whether yeah. the site that they're advertising on is legitimate or not. They just want that traffic. Buyer beware as usual on the web. Thank that's you, Andrew. Sure. Thank you. For URLs of today's featured websites, check out the Internet Cafe site at cmptv.com. Andrew, you're from the Ask Isadora website, and I, I think there's kind of an interesting uh, phenomenon going on right now where the media seems to really be full of really overt sexual images, or, you know, a lot of that kind of stuff going on. And uh, at the same time, I think there's almost sort of like a, a prudish sense in the community right now where, where people don't have a lot of forums or feel comfortable about talking about a lot of sexuality in public. And a site like Ask Isadora seems to be addressing those kind of things. Who, who is Isadora and, and how did she get to talk about all this stuff? Well, Isadora is a uh, internationally syndicated sex advice columnist and a board certified sexologist um, who runs in a number of weekly newspapers and magazines around the country I'm and, and the world. San Francisco Bay Guardian, exactly. I've been reading her, yeah. Bay Guardian yeah. Uh, used to be the Village Voice and she's out now down there. Um, and uh, uh, for years, she's been doing this Q&A, uh, where people write in, I've got a problem, right. you know, and she says, here's your answer. Right. And one of the main things uh, that the web opened up for her was the ability, uh, a request that she often received from writers was saying, you know, the person who wrote in last week about uh, sucking toes, mm -hmm. um, I'm really into sucking toes, too, and, and can you... Me. No, it's <laughs> <big>. <laughs> Was that you? Yeah. Um, uh, and can you put me in contact with this person? And she could never do that. And the web opened up the ability to... Uh, uh, take the community of readers that she had, bring them to one specific point, and, um, and enable them to make those sorts of connections that they weren't able to do through her column. Really link them up. Yeah, I mean, probably legally she couldn't really link them up even, and this is a chance for them to, to get together. Now, I was looking at the site last night. One of the things that was interesting to me was it seemed like there is a, a large propensity for men to go on this site, and, and they're not your typical men running around with sex chat. I mean, this is like men asking serious and interesting questions about their sexuality. What, how did this happen? <laughs> well, I think, I think it's part of the, uh, the nature of the forum and the nature of Isadora's reputation is that she draws a very high level of dialogue. One of the other issues that Isadora brought out was that the web is to men what women's groups of the 70s uh, were to women and that it provided a really safe place um, for men to voice uh, feelings and opinions and discuss issues that they haven't really had a venue for uh, prior to um, the internet and so we're really I think taking advantage of the the openness and and the the fact that I think a lot of men need to talk about these issues and they really haven't had that that space and right. so it's opening up and Isidore is one of the places where people can do that right. now I think that's a, probably a very accurate assumption now one thing though you have all these men on the site and I would imagine that from time to time you have people who are misbehaving or basically I mean you want to create a sense of community a safe place what do you guys do to, to sort of foster that? Well, we've been struggling with that for a long time, um, and it's a real minority. And one of the things that we've done uh, is introduce the ability to identify, to, to, we've given users the ability to identify abusive users as bozos. Mm -hmm. And once you, you identify a user as a bozo, their posts no longer appear in your conferencing mm -hmm. environment. They no longer see you when you're online. They can no longer chat with you or send you private email while you're online. Okay, now real quick, what are just some of the really interesting features that people can go see when they're when they're checking out your site? Well, there's so many. There's instant messaging, there's web-based email, um, there's filtering, uh, there are uh, personality profiles, user home pages for all of the members of the site. Um, there uh, is, I think, a compelling issue, and that's the ability to participate in all web-based forums via email as a, as a mailing list. So if you're at work and you don't have web access, you can still participate in this dialogue, right. and your responses are go, go back to the board in the proper parent-sibling thread right. um, of one, that dialogue. One thing you may want to watch out, though, is uh, doing your Ask Isadora emails from work, because you never know what, uh, who's, reading, that <laughs> who's mail. reading your that's email. Right. 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 Well, did you discover anything you found worthwhile, interesting, in some of these sexy sites? That well, about? I went to, of course, uh, oneandonly.com. So I got some interesting insight into the dating world, but I have to admit that some of the sites that you guys were looking at were a somewhat little, more a little bit more interesting, yeah. at least, yeah. You learn anything? Uh, you've been around? Yeah, I did. I, I was able to sort of get beyond sort of the hardcore sex sites, which kind of jump in your face, right. so to speak, and, and look at uh, sites like um, Ask Isadora, a chat site, but it's sort of an, an intellectual sexuality chat site, right. mainly men in there talking about 
you know, questions of their own sexuality in, in an open forum, and, and it, was, it was pretty interesting. Yeah. What I liked about uh, Danny, the woman I spoke to from Danny.com, I mean, here's a woman who, who's really been in the, the, the porn business, if you will, in many ways. She was a dancer. Uh, she was doing, you know, adult videotapes and so on. And she made a good point. Here in the web world, once again, sort of level playing field, she's an entrepreneur. She's running her own business. Nobody's exploiting her. She's in charge. And it really changes that whole picture of really that relationship between women uh, and, and, and the adult sex business. So I found it kind of interesting. Anyhow, that's our look at Sex Online. We'll see you here next week again at Cybersmith here at the Internet Cafe. The Internet Cafe is brought to you by Z Auction, the live online shopping experience. Additional funding from PC Connection and Mac Connection, the catalog and online superstore with PC and Mac products, toll free technical support, and overnight delivery. And by Windows Magazine, delivering desktop, enterprise, and internet computing news, reviews, features, and how to's for a Windows world because the world runs on Windows. Additional funding from SoftSource Incorporated, publishers of Pro One Software, educational software for young adults. To purchase a videotape copy of today's program, call toll-free 1-888-310-7850. Please specify the show number and the topic.